Am I the a-hole for not paying for my daughter's wedding because she invited my brother and his family? I'm 46 male, my brother 48 male. When I was 20, my then-girlfriend cheated with my brother. I was heartbroken and angry and told him he's no longer my brother. Despite my request, my family didn't cut him off, so I told them that I will never again be in the same place as he is. If they wish to invite both, then they should just invite him as I am the one giving the ultimatum. My daughter is getting married in spring next year. In our culture, both parents are paying for the wedding, 50-50. Unexpectedly, my daughter sat me down and told me that she will be inviting my brother and his family. He married my cheating ex. Apparently, she was seeing them for the last four years and built a relationship behind my back. She even wants her cousin to be some kind of flower girl. I was angry. I told her what my boundaries are and that if my brother is invited, then I will not pay my part of the wedding. She became angry in turn and told me it's time to let go of the past. I told her it's not her call to make. We argued some more and she told me I am making her wedding about myself. I told her I will probably not even attend, so it will be all about her. She left crying. My ex-wife called me screaming and told me I'm a huge a-hole and that our daughter is crushed. Then my parents called. Same thing. I told them off and now I'm ignoring their calls. My girlfriend told me to reconsider and apologize. That by not paying and attending, I will break a relationship with my daughter. I don't know. I think my boundaries should be respected. Am I an a-hole for that? Now for the comments. Despite my request, my family didn't cut him off. I can't get over the entitlement in this line. Like, really? Your brother messes up and you want him to be disowned? He cut my heart to pieces. I expected for my parents to be on my side, but they were on his. And now they are wondering why our relationship is very cold. I will shed very little tears when they are gone. Yeah, you definitely have your head screwed on straight about this. Yeah, my parents were so great they even let them be in our house after. They were banging next to my room for two months, very loud so I could hear them. Had to move out because I couldn't take it anymore. Yo, what is happening on Reddit today? Man, not stay home all the way. This is one of those stories where your daughter has decided that she's willing to alienate you for someone that betrayed your trust. It doesn't matter if it was 20 plus years ago. It only matters that it happened, which thereby means she betrayed your trust. If she wants him there so bad, he can pay the half. Also, it's okay that she has a relationship. It's okay that she wants her cousin in it. It's not okay that she wants you to pay half for her wedding so a person that truly hurt you can participate in it as well. While I am fully supporting you standing your ground, just remember, if you stand here, you will miss out on her potential kids, birthday parties, and other family events because your family will truly cut you off. If you're okay with that, do so. Added to Dwed. Actually, I still wouldn't pay since there's so much secrecy. I bet you'll pay and your brother will still show up regardless. What's going on is OP is a man. There have been several similar posts about women not forgiving sisters who broke up relationships they had how they didn't want to attend or didn't want the sister to attend their weddings and so forth. Mom's not wanting to go if their ex would be present. The get voted not the a-hole. But dad wants to stick up for his boundaries? And boom, a-hole. I was thinking of the same thing. I remember an AIT post in which Anopi refused to help her soon-to-be homeless sister. She cut off her sister because the sibling had an affair with Opie's ex-fiance. Opie was deemed to be not the a-hole. Y'all are wild in these comments. If this is real, I'd love to see some of you play happy family with your cheating brother and ex. I'm losing it at these. It's been 26 years. Get over it. Lol, like no. His anger at his brother is completely justified. Sorry, kid. You knew how bad he hurt your dad. Why are you surprised? It's easy to see who the serial cheaters are. They just keep outing themselves. Or the ungrateful kids. Next story. Am I the a-hole for not wanting to be part of my stepmother's family tradition with my step and half-sister? So, my stepmother has this tradition her family does regarding weddings where all the sisters wear the same piece from a family member's wedding outfit. Typically, it's something from your mother or grandmother's wedding. My stepmother and all her sisters wore their mother's veil. Stepmother's nieces by her older sister all wore their mother's wedding pearls. You get the picture. I'm engaged. And my stepmother sat me, my stepsister, and half-sister down to discuss what our item would be. I told her I was planning to wear something of my mom's, and that would be all the extras I would go with. She told me it was an important tradition to continue, but I just told her it was nice of her to think of me, but it wasn't my tradition. 
She then said a simple answer would be to let them wear the necklace when their wedding days come around. They thought that was a great idea and said if it was the piece they were thinking it was, it was the most beautiful thing ever and they would love to wear it. I said that wasn't going to happen, that it was a piece of my mom I could have during my wedding since I can't have her. Now, my not wanting to do this tradition has caused some argument. My step and half-sister were upset I wouldn't do it with them. My stepmother is upset that I don't want to embrace a tradition from her family. The tradition has no interest to me at all, and I would never share something my mom's with my step or half-sister. My dad tried to talk me into it. He told me it would mean so much. And would I not like to finally feel like they are just my mom and sisters instead of having step and have in front of their titles? I told him no, that I have a mom, and her being dead doesn't change that. I mean, I need to see someone else as my mom too. My stepmother told me she has always tried to make me a true part of her family, a true daughter, and I'm in a hell for rejecting that as an adult, when it doesn't just hurt her but my sisters as well. Am I the a-hole for not wanting to do this slash turning it down? Not the a-hole. The second wife and her child want to wear your dead mom's jewelry? That's creepy. She wants her daughters to wear it during their weddings in the future. She's not asking to wear it herself. I get it. Still creepy. The necklace is something special for you. Not a family heirloom as they weren't your mom's family. Not day haul at all and you handled the situation perfectly. Ignore your dad and anyone else. You are in the right here. And buy a safe or something for precious jewelry. This. Definitely find a safe place for your necklace or it will turn up missing. Not day haul. Definitely. They can keep their traditions. It's lovely that you want to have a connection to your mom. Have the wedding you want and can afford. Never let anyone sit you down to discuss anything. Allowing someone to sit you down is giving them authority and power over you that they do not have. You may agree to discuss something with them, but on equal terms. It's not your tradition and she's not your mother. It's not her wedding. It's your wedding. Your father shouldn't try to tell you anything. Am I the a-hole for not wanting my husband to die to attend his brother's wedding? Plus update. Original post. I'm newly pregnant with our first child. My husband's brother just recently proposed to his girlfriend of four months, and they plan on getting married when I'm 38 weeks pregnant. They live about seven hours away from us. I don't really like his fiancée due to some very off-the-wall and inappropriate comments she made during my mother-in-law's funeral, but everyone else seems to like her, so I'm doing my best to get along with her. When she asked me to be a part of her bridal party, I thought, cool, this is a chance for me to get to really know her and maybe be friends outside of first time I met her, which was at the funeral. She hadn't set the date yet, but I told her I was pregnant and when I was due, and that while I don't want her to schedule their wedding around me, my husband and I also wouldn't be able to attend if it was closer to my due date. They set the date, and she asked about dresses for me. That's when I told her that while we are very happy for her, we won't be able to come. She asked why, and I repeated what I told her before she set the date, and that I couldn't travel far that late in pregnancy. She had a meltdown. She insisted that I could still come since it was only a seven-hour drive, barring traffic, and that if I couldn't come, my husband needed to still come because it was his brother. I said this is our first child, and if I go into labor, I will not be doing it by myself, nor will my husband miss the birth of our child to attend anyone's wedding. She called me selfish for missing her wedding, and that if at least my husband didn't go, we wouldn't speak to them again. My husband is now anxious because he wants to be there for his brother, but knows if he leaves me and I go into labor, he could theoretically miss the birth of his first child. The added bit about making sure him and his brother don't have a relationship when they've always been close also adds fuel to the fire. She texted everyone in the family group chat that I was abusive and controlling for not letting my husband attend their wedding without context, saying I did not like her. I hadn't planned on telling all of our extended family we were pregnant yet, since I'm still in my first trimester. My husband texted back saying I'm not forcing him to do anything, but we agreed not to tell everyone we were pregnant yet, so our phones have been going off for hours with texts about setting our pettiness aside to be happy for the couple. Even those who know I'm pregnant and would be close to my due date say I should at least let my husband go. My mom labored for only three hours with me and an hour with my sister and she had us both at 39 week mark. Her mother also had a short labor, so I feel very uncomfortable with the idea of leaving our city to travel so far away during the last weeks of my first pregnancy. Now for the top comments before reading the mini update. Not day home. 
Babies can come at any time during the last few weeks of pregnancy. Your husband's place is with you during that time. Seven hours away is way too far for him to be traveling when you could give birth any day. And honestly, whilst he was there, he would not enjoy the wedding nor could he drink, because he would be pooping his pants in case he went into labor. It would be a lot less fun than they think. Agreed, not the a-hole. Jumping on the top comment to add this. Please speak to your OB about travel during that time of pregnancy. My OB straight up forbid me from traveling more than one hour away from home at the five-month mark, and further refused to travel at all at seven months. Granted, I was high risk, but not knowing your history slash medical state, I figured it was worth mentioning to check with them about. Absolutely not day home. You are supposed to be within one hour of your hospital once you reach the end of pregnancy, or even some high-risk cases even earlier than that. There are way too many variables, and 38 weeks is not the time to be going seven hours away. There's even a chance you'll already have delivered your baby. And there's zero sense to bring a one to two week old seven hours away for a wedding. Having a baby absolutely trumps attending a wedding. Why is she expecting you to prioritize your wedding over your family? You already established your boundary and said no, and she needs to respect your wishes. Your husband should not plan to attend without you. Again, starting your family trumps a wedding every single time. He shouldn't be choosing to be away from that. He's not, but still feels pretty guilty slash conflicted regardless. Especially now that his relationship with his brother is apparently dependent on attending the wedding. Now for the little update. My husband responded to the family members who reached out to us individually and told them the situation, including the fact sister-in-law was informed of our due date and that we wouldn't be able to attend if they chose a wedding date close to it. His brother finally called him back and he spoke with him directly. And from what he understands, he was at work so future sister-in-law was not around. My husband explained how it was 100% his decision to stay with me and had a heart-to-heart -heart talk of which a lot was discussed. His brother was surprised about the ultimatum, apologized for his fiancé's behavior, explaining they apparently recently had a miscarriage which is news to us and she likely was taking out her feelings including jealousy on me. He also told my husband that he was going to talk to sister-in-law and have the date changed since they didn't sign a contract with any vendors yet. He said he really wants us there since we are close, so he'll either move the wedding forward or push it back. So, I guess we might be going to the wedding after all? Though I told my husband at this point he can be a groomsman, but I definitely will not be part of the bridal party, because I don't want her to take out her feelings on me throughout my pregnancy while she's wedding planning. Today was super stressful, and I won't be responding to any more comments, but I wanted to thank all of you for your support and suggestions. I started having doubts about whether or not I was the a-hole here when family kept pestering us to concede, but I'm glad to find out our decision was perfectly normal and expected. Now for the last story. Am I the a-hole for not allowing my step-family to be introduced as my family? I, 17 female, would rather live with my dad, but for school reasons, it's just a lot more convenient for everyone for me to live with my mom during the week. So mostly I'm here to humor my dad. My mom did some stuff during their divorce that I think was horrible, so I don't really like her very much now. But I've been trying to just keep things civil until I graduate. She married a guy with two kids, 12 male and 9 female. At like light speed after the divorce. And the whole merging families thing isn't going well. His kids hate her. I feel kinda neutral about him and just want to be left alone. And his step-siblings and I are okay, but mostly they do their own thing and I do mine. It's not the happy blended family my mom wanted, and she keeps trying to force it and making it worse. Her husband goes along with her, so basically nobody is happy in that house. I kinda exploded the hornet's nest this last weekend because I lost my cool about something my mom has been pushing for a while about the step family. She insists on calling my stepdad my dad, and the kids my siblings, and gets frustrated that I won't call them that. They are not. I have a dad, and I didn't grow up with the kids, so I'm not going to pretend. I finally got tired of it, so when we ran into some of my mom and stepdad's friends last weekend and he introduced me as his daughter, I said, I'm not your daughter. My mom tried to laugh it off, but the friends looked uncomfortable, and she got mad at me in the car and told me I need to get with the program and stop being a jerk about this. I told her that he wasn't my dad, and the kids aren't my siblings, and if she doesn't get with my program, she can be not my mom the minute I turn 18. Big argument. They try to take my car keys as punishment. And when I told my dad since the car was in his name, he called and said that they give either him or me the keys immediately or he'll get the police involved. So my mom has been crying and says I'm an a-hole and stepdad agrees. 
Step bro said he thought it was the best and that I'm right. My grandparents came over and tried to talk me into apologizing and just going along with things. My dad says they pushed too much and got what they earned, but I probably should have just left it alone in the car. I don't think I was wrong, but I don't know if I was an a-hole. I told her that he wasn't my dad, the kids aren't my siblings, and if she doesn't get with my program, she can be not my mom the minute I turn 18. This spine is gonna get you places. It may have been harsh, but you are right. Not day hole at all. Not day hole. I love this comment. Never feel bad for standing up for yourself. Do not let your mom guilt you into doing or saying anything you don't want to do. Not day hole. You are already making an effort to be civil with a stepdad and step siblings. You clearly have a dad that is involved in your life, and it seems like you have clearly expressed that you are not comfortable calling them dad or your siblings. They shouldn't be forcing you to call them that or introducing you that way. Plus, one of his kids agreed, the one old enough to see for sure what's happening. You can't force a blend, it has to happen on its own. That doesn't mean you have to still cross into dad slash mom stuff either, but where it becomes a family in its own way.